Well, hello and welcome to tonight's teaching. My name is Pastor Rita Gant and my husband, Pastor Tori, and our church family at House of Power Outreach welcome you. Uh, let's go ahead and pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for your presence here with us. We open up our hearts and our, our minds, our souls, Lord God, our spirits to receive all that you have up for us tonight through the power of your word and the power of your love. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, I'm so excited. Tonight's message is titled Free and Clear, and living a life free and clear is just priceless, and I'm going to explain to you what I mean by that. We're going to start out in Hebrews 12.1. I have it here in the King James Version. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. So tonight we're going to talk about running freely or, or being clear, uh, free and clear to run the race that is set before us and how we can go about getting in position to do that. So that scripture said the sin, uh, setting aside the sin that so easily besets us. So I looked up the word beset and um, it's defined as a, to attack, to, to beset is to attack, afflict, torment, torture, oppress, trouble, and harass. And that's what sin does to us as believers and to all of us. It entangles us and hinders us from running freely. I have it here, that same scripture, Hebrews 12, 1 in the NLT. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. Um, so tonight we're just going to talk a little bit about living life freely and what that exactly looks like. When we allow sin to become a normal part of our daily routine, we become so used to it that we don't realize how much it trips us up and how hard it is, um, how hard it makes our lives. And now I'm going to talk to you a little bit about sin tonight. And sin is just doing something uh, that is contrary to what God would have us do. And, you know, sinning against God or, or sin in any of its forms is just doing something that is uh, not what God would want us to do. And so let's just look at a, a few sins that can become so commonplace in our lives that we don't even possibly, we don't even try to weed them out or get rid of them because they're just so part of our normal, normal, our daily routine. And maybe we don't even recognize them as sin. Um, and, you know, sin, like the scripture says, trips us up and hinders us from running freely. Uh, the first one I want to talk to you about tonight is worry. And we've done a lot of teaching on worry, but the Lord just really put this on my heart for today, for such a time as this, to talk to you about the sin of worry. And now you may have even been taught that it's normal to worry every day and to think worrisome thoughts and just on the regular. But for a believer, it should not be our normal. It should not be. So let's go ahead and see why. Matthew 6, 25 through 33, I have it here in the NLT, says, That is why I tell you, this is Jesus talking, okay? That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. Whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear, isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't, aren't you more, far more valuable to Him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? Still Jesus talking. And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing, yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, He will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? So don't worry about these things, saying what will we eat, what will we drink, what will we wear. These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your Heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and He will give you everything that you need. So Jesus himself tells us not to worry. Worrying is a sin that entangles us and trips us up from running our race freely. Worrying can keep us from fully trusting God and can keep us from a life that's full of faith and full of all of God's promises. You might say or think, easy for you to say, Miss Rita, but not so fast. It's really not easy for me to say because 
I personally was raised on worry. It was my steady diet growing up. I, it was my daily diet. I worried over what we would eat. I worried if we were going to have electricity. I worried if we were going to have clothes. I worried if we were going to have safety. I worried about everything. And there was a lot of evidence and circumstances that showed that I had every reason to worry. Um, so I know a thing or two about worrying. Um, in my childhood, it was even implied that it was a holy thing to worry. It was. I was taught that, you know, sometimes God comes through, sometimes He doesn't. You just got to hope for the best. Well, that is not faith. And hope without faith produces very little. So, it is not holy to worry. It is not a holy thing. It is just sad. The Bible even says in Proverbs thirteen twelve that hope deferred makes the heart sick. Worry is not your friend, even though it may try to be a constant companion. Worry entangles you, it besets you, it harasses you, it oppresses you, it, it torments you. Worry has to be removed from your life in order for you to run freely the race that God has set before you to run. So tonight I'm going to tell you a little bit about how we can remove worry. Because, you know, it can be such a, an automatic thing in our lives that we have to, like, be aware of it before we can get rid of it. So tonight I'm going to teach you how to remove worry from your life because it's just not going to go away on its own. The only true way to remove worry is to replace it with the word of faith, the word of God, and God's truth. Meaning you have to meditate on God's word and meditate on his goodness to get rid of worry. And I promise you, if you let it creep back in just a little bit, it starts stealing from you. Again, it starts stealing your peace, your joy, and your results. You can't afford it. Philippians 4, 6-9, I have it here in the NLT, says, Don't worry, here we go again, about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all that He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can comprehend or understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. I said, which exceeds anything we can understand. I, I put in comprehend, excuse me. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you will live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me, everything you heard from me and saw me doing. Then the God of peace will be with you. And this was uh, Paul's teaching here. So choosing to think on things that are lovely, just, and of good report will chase worry away for good if you will be consistent with it. So <clears throat> the only way to remove worry is to replace it with the word of faith, the word of God. Meaning you have to meditate on God's word and God's goodness to get rid of worry. And uh, make sure that you're consistent with it. And, and that's how you fight off worry. And you've got to train yourself to think on things that are lovely, just, and of good report. And that way you can, you know, push that worrisome lifestyle out and away from you for good. And when you do that, you'll be able to, uh, to get rid of that sin of worry. Because worrying is not God's best for you. It's never how he intended for you to live, and it can be damaging not only to your soul, but to your body. So, um, so I'm here tonight to tell you that uh, living free and clear from worry is the best way to live, and that's how you do it, what I just explained, okay? You've got you've to put the word in and choose to think on what's, what's good. So the second sin I wanted to talk to you about tonight um, that would entangle you and keep you from running the race free and clear, freely, um, is the uh, is acts of anger. Now I didn't put down just anger, and I'm going to I'm going to tell you why. I put down acts of anger, and the reason why is um, I've just got a newsflash for you. Um, anger in itself is not a sin, um, but the sin of acts of anger definitely trips us up and keeps us from running our race freely. Many of us experience anger for many different reasons, many different things. The problem with anger is that when we allow it to control us, then we act accordingly and we immediately enter into sin through a lack of self-control. See, the Word of God says 
in Ephesians 4, 23 through 27. I hear, have it here in the King James. And be re renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and truth holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry, and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. So the news flash is that you can be angry and not sin. Things can make you angry. You can be upset about something. But we get into sin when we start doing acts of anger. And that is letting our self-control just fly out the window and just not using any kind of uh, self-control whatsoever and just kind of, you know, acting and speaking uh, out of anger. That's when sin enters in. How do we follow God's instruction to anger and sin not and don't let the devil have a place? Well, how do we use self-control and choose not to sin when we are angry? That's what I wanted to talk to you about. Again, we must choose to train ourselves in the art of self-control. And how do we do that? We do that by going to God immediately each time that we feel out of control, especially due to anger. Now, I've had tons of practice over the last 30 plus years um, in this arena here, um, in this department. We, we can even ask the Holy Spirit who lives on the inside of us, who has brought these, these gifts of the Spirit, these fruits of the Spirit, excuse me, in seed form into our lives and into our, our being. Uh, we can ask Him to help us to be even more clear and more loud and just ask Him, Lord, please, I want to do better. I want to, uh, when I get angry, not sin. I want to have self-control. And when you ask the Holy Spirit to help you like that, I promise you, He will. And, um, you know, you'll have many opportunities, I'm sure, to exercise self-control. But the more you train yourself to do that, the better you become in this area. And the bigger the fruit of self-control becomes in your life. And the greater peace that you will have in your life. Uh, when you start exercising self-control instead of just letting anything and everything that irritates you uh, make you lose your self-control and make you uh, act in acts of anger. Um, we should even ask the Holy Spirit to please be overly involved in this arena, to please speak up and help us to choose wisely. When we train ourselves to go to God, God to go to Him every single time we feel out of control, every single time our emotions uh, become unstable, train your, yourself to go to God just by crying out to Him. You can even excuse yourself, go in the bathroom, take a deep breath, just cry out to God, say, God, help me. You saw that, right, God? That's what I do. I said, you saw that, right? <laughs> That's what I do. And, uh, you know, God is just, He comforts me. And the, uh, the moment that you cry out to God, relief comes. The moment that you cry out to God, relief in your soul comes. Uh, God will not leave you hanging. He will be there for you, I promise. Um, when we train ourselves to go to God with our emotions, we become stable and self-control develops. It is, after all, a fruit of the Spirit inside of us, like I had said. Here is a prayer that I found um, that could help you with this. God, please help me. I know being upset is not going to get me anywhere. This person hurt my feelings and that was wrong, but I'm not going to act on this. With your grace and strength, I'm going to control myself. And I'm going to trust you to take care of the situation. So that's just a simple little prayer. You can put it in your own words. You can cry and say, God, you saw that, right? Like I do. You saw that. I'm not going to act on it, but give me the strength and the wisdom to handle this. I know you've got this. It's in your hands. I trust you with it. And leave it at that. And God will go to bat for you. And let me tell you, he's the best batter. <laughs> so um, I have something here that was a... That first prayer was a prayer that I saw, uh, saw online from Joyce Meyer, and here's a quote from her. I want to encourage you to forgive those who have hurt you. Let go of any angry feelings you're holding on to and place those situations in God's hands. We can trust Him to be our vindicator. Amen. I did a message on that a, a while back. God is bigger than all our feelings, and He has given us self-control so we can walk in peace and experience His perfect love when we need it the most. Okay? So simply crying out to God for help in the midst of your anger will bring you immediate relief and get you started down the right path in that situation. 
We want God's wisdom. We want His instruction on what to do with the situation. And when we cry out to Him immediately and we train ourselves to go to Him every time that we become uh, feel out of control or feel like our emotions are unstable, if we train ourselves to go to Him, we'll get immediate relief and then we'll get the wisdom that starts uh, just flooding our souls and our, our spirits. His wisdom will start immediately when you cry out to Him and give you uh, the right path to go down in that situation. And that's what we need, isn't it, as believers? But whatever you do, do not try to handle on it on your own without Him because, and this is speaking from experience, the, dis the results are always disastrous. When you feel out of control and you don't ask God for help, the results are always a disaster. You are a believer, <laughs> right? You need to believe that He, God, can help and will help you and he's a very present help in time of trouble and we need to make ourselves trained to go to him so that he can do so he can help us so this is the only way to extract yourself from a life of acts of anger and the destruction that that life can bring so I just want to encourage you to you know encourage all of us to free ourselves from that sin of acts of anger so that we can run freely without the hindrance of this lifestyle, of the lifestyle of acts of anger. Um, it is so destructive and it, it, it ruins, it, it can ruin so much. It can ruin relationships, it can ruin, um, you know, your career, it can ruin your path, your destiny. Acts of anger, you know, that's why God put it up there. It says, and do not give the devil a place, neither give place to the devil. The enemy wants to use our acts of anger to destroy our lives. And we are smarter than that. The Bible says that we're not ignorant of the devil's schemes or his devices. And if we will just pay attention to what God is telling us and what the Holy Spirit is prompting us to do, we can avoid these pitfalls and this destruction. Uh, we just have to be strong enough in the strength of the Lord to choose wisely, to choose better, to be better. And so, you know, like I said, you're a believer. Believe that God can and will help you and turn to Him and ask Him for help in any kind of sin, and whether it be worry or anger or the next one we're going to talk about is fear. And yes, fear can be a sin. I'm going to explain that to you. So the third thing I want to talk to you about tonight is the sin of fear. And this is kind of a, a sister to worry. But whereas worry is a nagging, persistence, persistent issue, fear can be a cruel, paralyzing matter. Um, so it's important for us to talk a little bit about it. It's very hard to run freely when we are entangled with paralyzing fear. You know, have you ever felt immobilized by fear? And you can't move, you can't act, you can't think even. And uh, that's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to paralyze us with fear so that we don't advance forward and we don't run the race that God has put out there for us to, to run and that we're just entangled up in that paralyzing fear. Proverbs 9.10 in the New King James Version says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. So the Word of God tells us to fear the Lord, and that it is the beginning of wisdom. Wisdom, wisdom is always knowing the right thing to do, and it comes from God. Fear meaning here to reverence and respect, not to fear God in a scary kind of way. God never wanted us to fear Him in a scary kind of way. He wants us to reverence Him and respect Him, because that's where we begin to get wisdom from Him, is when we honor Him and, and uh, you know, reverence Him and, and fear Him in a healthy way. So, you know, that's when wisdom begins in our hearts and our souls, is when we reverence God. So there are some fears that are healthy, though, like, <clears throat> I fear crossing the road without looking. And that was just drilled into me as a child. You know, never cross the road without looking. You could get hit by a car. So, of course, I have a healthy fear of just crossing the road without looking. So that's a good fear. Um, I have a fear of putting my hand out toward an angry, barking dog. That's a good, healthy fear, right? You don't want to do that. Those fears, of course, are not a sin. They are given to us to protect us. Fear becomes a sin when it replaces the trust that we have in our God. Fear becomes a sin when it replaces the trust that we have in our God. When we choose to meditate on the fear more than meditating on who we know God is and what He has done for us and what He can do for us and, and uh, trusting Him to do for us. When we meditate on the fear more than that, that's when it becomes a sin. 
when we meditated on on the fear more than uh, on who we know God is and what we trust Him to do, like keep us safe, that's when it becomes a sin. We can tell it's an unhealthy fear or a sinful fear when it starts controlling our lives in a way that would not be pleasing to God. When your fear is keeping you from what God wants for your life, then you know that it is not a healthy fear. It's a, it's a sinful fear because it's replacing trusting God and it's keeping you from doing things that would you know, would please the Lord, keeping you from living a life that, you know, would be pleasing to Him. Trusting Him and, and living in faith and, and doing what He's called you to do and going where He's called you to go and living the way He's called you to live, that's all a life of trust and faith in God. And um, fear can, can rob us from that. And, and um, you know, God just really just wanted to take a moment tonight to to help us to be aware of that and to, you know, be, um, to become um, more aware that that fear can be deceptive and crafty and can steal what he has for you. So let's get it out of our lives. Isaiah 41.10 in the Amplified, Do not fear anything, for I am with you. Do not be afa afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, be assured I will help you. I will certainly take hold of you with my righteous right hand, a hand of justice, of power, of victory, of salvation. See, God has all of these things for us, and He's He's there to help us and to strengthen us and to give us victory. And He has a hand of power. Um, you know, we just need to spend time meditating on God's Word to understand who He is so that we can trust Him and not fear. Okay? So, you know, Second Timothy 1.7 says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. And self-control, like what we talked about earlier, that's another definition of that sound mind. Um, God has told us over 100 times in His Word not to be afraid. He tells us not to fear because He is in control. He is our refuge, our safety, and our strength. 1 John 4, 18, I have it here in the New King James Version. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment, does it not? But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. What does that even mean? When we don't fully understand God's love for us, we can find ourselves living with unreasonable fears trying to control our lives and, bring, and it brings torment to our souls. We've got to understand, like I said earlier, we've got to spend time meditating on God's Word to understand who He is so that we can understand how to trust Him in our day-to-day -day and, not, and not letting that fear control us and replace our trust in Him. Living in fear besets us. And we talked about what besets means earlier. It means, you know, living in fear besets us. It attacks us. It afflicts us. It torments and tortures and oppresses us. It troubles and harasses us. It entangles us and hinders us from running freely. And it keeps us from living the life that Jesus gave his life for us to live. So, you know, we just got through doing a whole mid-year fast, church-wide fast for peace. And just standing in faith for peace all over the world and in every situation and everybody's heart and mind. Let's not forget to tackle this fear thing head-on because it is the greatest thief of peace. Living in fear is the greatest thief of your peace. Just trust God. He has your best interest in his heart. He's always for you, never against you. And um, he will keep you and you are safe. Give him that opportunity to do so through getting to know him in his word so that you can trust him without fear. You know, we've got to remove worry, anger, and fear from our lives by meditating on God's Word and applying His instruction to our lives in every way possible. Sin in any form is just not for us anymore, and it's not, it's just not worth it. It takes away so much more. Sin in, in any form takes away so much more than it could ever add. I'm almost out of time. Let me just close. Let's ask God tonight to reveal to us any kind of sin in our lives and ask Him for strength and wisdom to live a life without it. When you get rid of it and you live free and clear from it, the freedom you will experience will just astound you. Feeling free and good about who you are is priceless. And trusting God as your everything is truly the very best way to live. Living free and clear from sin, free and clear from fear, worry, anger, these things, it's the best way to live. 
um, let's just go ahead and ask God tonight to just reveal any kind of sin to us. Um, and if we're in any of these three that I pointed out today, for sure, for the Lord to reveal that to us so that we can get rid of it and, and meditate on Him and His Word. Um, let's go ahead and pray together. Father God, we just come to you, Lord, and we ask you to reveal any kind of sin, whether it be these three we talked about tonight or anything. Please reveal it to us so that we can get it out of our lives. We want to choose wisely, Lord God. We want to choose to live in the best plan that you have for our lives. And so, Lord God, we just denounce uh, worry and anger, acts of anger and, and fear uh, from our lives. We ask you, Lord, to help us to remove any kind of sin, anything that would keep us from truly running free and clear uh, without any kind of entanglement, Lord God. Live in a life that's pleasing to you and, and is just the best life that you have for us. Help us, Lord God to meditate on your word, to make it priority in our lives so that uh, the rest of this could just can be flushed out. We thank you, Lord God, that your word is the most dominant thing in our lives, that we truly rest in you and we just receive your peace for our lives, that it's priceless, Lord. We love you. We thank you, Lord, for helping us to live a life free from sin in every way in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, thank you for tuning in tonight. We hope that the Word of God here just helps you to grow and grow and grow. And, and we're just excited about what God is doing in your life, your family's life. We're standing in faith every day for protection and safety and provision and every good thing for you. Okay? We love you. God bless you. And we'll see you next time.